In this video, we're going to look at what happens when we take a linear function, which is this line right here, and revolve it around the x-axis. And what we get is a three-dimensional cone, and we're going to see how we can use a definite integral to calculate the volume of that region. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the equation of the linear function. Well, what we can see is it goes through the points 0, 3, and 5, 0. That means our slope of this linear function, well, we have a change in y, it goes down 3 as it goes over 5. So our slope is negative 3 fifths, a y-intercept of 3. So the equation of that function is negative 3 fifths x plus 3. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use slicing. So here in red, you can see I have my slice, and I'm going to give it an arbitrary width of delta x. That delta x is eventually going to go to zero when we have infinitely many slices. I'm making this slice at x sub i. So this is my ith slice. Now, the shape of this ith slice, if I were to pull it out, looks like a cylinder because I'm choosing it small enough so that I can assume that these sides are straight up and down, that they're parallel to each other. So, what we're going to need then is the radius. Well, if we were to pull this out and put it flat on the paper, it would look like a circle. We know it's got a little bit of thickness coming out of the paper with a dot representing the x-axis. So the radius is going to be basically from the x-axis to the edge of the cone. Well, if we look on here, at x sub i, if I went up to the cone, there's my line, and what I can see is, depending on where I pick my slice, that will have a different value. That's okay, because I know the relationship between x and y. So this here is going to be given by my function. It's negative 3 fifths x sub i plus 3. What that does is that gives me the y sub i for this given x sub i, or the radius for a given x sub i. The reason that's important is because when we go to find the volume of the ice slice, well, like we said, it's a cylinder. So pi r squared h, we'll call it sub i, h, and applying our values, r sub i is this y sub i. So pi times negative 3 fifths x sub i plus 3 squared, and then the height of this thing is delta x. So there's the volume of our ice slice. Now, remember, we know the value of this now, because if we know the volume of the ice slice, we know we can use a definite integral to calculate the volume of the whole thing. So negative 3 fifths x plus 3, that whole thing squared, dx. The limits, well, we're integrating over x. x can be as small as 0 and as large as 5. And there's our definite integral we need to calculate. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to pull the pi out and save it for the end. I do need to square this. This needs to be foiled out. Negative 3 fifths times negative 3 fifths is 9 20 fifths x squared. Negative 3 fifths times 3 is negative 9 fifths. And remember, we're going to have two of those. So negative 18 fifths x plus 9 dx. Let's take our antiderivatives. This here is going to be, this is going to be 9 over 25 times x cubed over 3. We'll be able to do some reducing. Minus 18 over 5 times x squared over 2. And some of you might be doing this all in one step, and that's fine. I'm just writing it all out for the video. 9x, this goes from 0 to 5. So this will reduce that to a 3. This will reduce that to a 9. Now, I'll plug in my limits. In this case, I don't have to worry about plugging in the lower limit because it'll zero the whole thing out. But always make sure you check that. That's not automatic because it happens a lot with exponential functions. People forget that. All right, so I have 3 25ths times 5 cubed minus 9 fifths times 5 squared plus 9 times 5. 
equals pi. <clears throat> 5 cubed, well this is 5 squared, so 25 cancels out with all of those. I end up with 3 times 5, so 15. We can cancel one of these out with one of these, so minus 45 plus 45. So we get just 15 pi. What's nice about this one is we can do a really quick check. We know that the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. So notice we have a cone here with a height of 5 and a radius of 3. So we have one-third pi times 3 squared times 5. 3 squared is 9 times 5 is 45. A third of that is 15 pi. So we see that we get the exact same value. Yes, this was a little quicker because we knew the formula, but this is a great way to derive the formula for the volume of a cone. Plus, it gives us a little bit more practice with using slicing. And we're going to be revolving some more complicated curves than just a linear function around not just the x-axis, but the y-axis and other horizontal and vertical lines.